Welcome to Grab and Go Info. Correlation versus causation is one of the most commonly asked data science interview questions. In this tutorial, you will learn what are the general strategies for answering the question about correlation and causation, how to answer the question in a clear and concise way, how to answer the follow up question of how to calculate correlation, how to answer the follow up question of how to measure causal impact. Let's get started. The interview question of correlation versus causation is usually asked with a specific example. For instance, the interviewer may ask, if we collect data for monthly ice cream sales and monthly shark attacks around the United States each year, we would find that the two variables are highly correlated. Does this mean that consuming ice cream causes shark attacks? We will answer the question in three steps. In the first step, provide the definitions for correlation and causality. In the second step, talk about the value range for correlation and causality and how to interpret the values. In the third step, List the algorithms for calculating correlation and for causal inference. Here is an example answer to the question. It covers the definitions and value ranges for correlation and causation separately. Ice cream sales and shark attacks are highly correlated. But this does not mean consuming ice cream causes shark attacks. This is because correlation does not imply causation. Correlation is a measure of the direction and strength of the association between two variables. It ranges from minus 1 to 1. Where the values close to 1 indicate a strong positive correlation, the values close to minus 1 indicate a strong negative correlation, and the values close to 0 indicate no correlation. Causation means one variable is influenced by another variable. The magnitude of the impact needs to be evaluated with the scale of the variable. For example, the causal impact of $1,000 can be a large impact for monthly salary change but can be a small impact on the housing price change. There is no limitation on the influence magnitude, so the causal impact can be very large or very small. In this example, ice cream consumption and shark attacks have a correlation but not causation. Both of them are impacted by confounding factors such as temperature. For the follow-up question of how to calculate correlation, here is an example answer. There are two commonly used correlation algorithms, Pearson correlation and Spearman correlation. The Pearson correlation measures the linear relationship between two continuous variables. It tells us if one variable changes, whether the other variable changes proportionally. The Pearson correlation is calculated based on the raw values of the two variables. The Spearman correlation measures the monotonic relationship between two continuous or ordinal variables. It tells us if one variable changes, whether the other variable tends to change as well but not necessarily change in proportion. The Spearman correlation is calculated based on the ranks of the two variables. To get the written version of this tutorial, please check out my blog post on medium.com. I will put the link in the video description. Medium.com is my most referenced website for data science and machine learning. It charges $5 per month for full access. I have been a medium.com member for many years and that's the best $5 I spent every month. If you would like to support me as a content creator and buy me a cup of coffee, Please use the link in the video description to join the Medium membership at no additional cost. If you prefer not to join, you can still read the post because there are a couple of free posts each month for everyone to read. OK, let's continue. For the follow-up question of how to measure causal impact, here is an example answer. The causal impact can be evaluated by randomized experiments or observational studies. A randomized experiment randomly separates the samples into the treatment group and the control group. The causal impact can be calculated by getting the difference between the treatment group and the control group. When only observational data is available, we can use causal inference algorithms to calculate the causal impact. Such algorithms include but are not limited to difference in difference, propensity score matching, inverse probability treatment weighting, and counterfactual modeling. Difference in difference compares the outcomes over time between the treatment and control groups and checks if there is a change in difference after the treatment intervention. Propensity score matching constructs a quasi-experiment by matching the samples with and without treatment using propensity scores. The causal impact is calculated using the samples after matching. IPTW uses the inverse probability of receiving treatment as the weight to account for the sample imbalance when calculating the causal impact. Counterfactual modeling is also called potential outcome modeling. It uses a model to predict what could have happened and calculate the causal impact by getting the difference between the actual results and the counterfactual estimation. Are you interested in the tutorials on causal inference using R or Python? Type causal inference tutorial in the comments if you are interested. 
I will create step-by-step -step tutorials for causal inference models if there is high demand, if you have made it this far. You probably find the information in this tutorial helpful. Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I publish new videos like this. To learn more about Data Science Interview, please click the YouTube playlist on the screen now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.